I did everything I could to make sure I didn't act in this movie. And initially, I remember that Tom didn't want to act in the film. Not that he felt like he couldn't do it, but he wanted somebody else to it so he could strictly focus on directing. However, that's not how it ended up happening. Most of my work I've done, I've acted in front of the screen. And I just, I really wanted to use this film as an opportunity to just explore myself and focus on my aspects as a director. There were other actors that I had actually auditioned that were on board to do it, but unfortunately, as is the reality with indie filmmaking, they ended up opting out for scheduling or personal reasons. And it got to the point where I think it was late 2019 and I just said, okay, screw it. I need to shoot something. I haven't made a short film in a long time. I need to just go ahead and make this already. So uh, that's what I decided to do. I was like, okay, I'm gonna be the main character. I'm gonna do it. Here we go. For the role of Jason, I did try to cast uh, different actors to do it, but uh, again, due to scheduling reasons, they weren't able to do it. So, but I knew Dylan was uh, really good at acting and he also did pretty well in the test shooting. So I thought, hey, it was a no-brainer. My role in front of the camera, I played the role of Jason Eugene, and I was Michael's best friend, the guy driving the car, and the one directly involved in that subsequent car crash. Other casting choices, I originally, I had sought out uh, Jake Goldfarb's dad, who is a police officer, an actual police officer for the for the police officer role in this movie. Um, unfortunately, due to legal reasons, uh, he wasn't able to, he wasn't allowed to show his badge number or uniform on the screen in the movie. Well, let's talk about Goldfarb and that alley scene there for a second. The vest and the jacket. Not only was he acting in the part, but he looked the part. Working in the news, I know a few guys up here on the force because often we're going to the police stations to talk to them. He looks exactly like a few guys on the force that I know up here. It's, it's insane how well that came together, not only in the costume department, but also Jake acting as well. For the role of the alley victim, I originally wanted Dylan's dad, Lonnie. He was actually going to be Michael's stepdad, and he would also reappear as the alley victim, and it would just been one of those things uh, that connects it all, connects everything together, and keeps things a lot more vague and, you know, more, would have added another interpretive element to the film. Unfortunately, last minute, he was not able to make it. He was starting to develop a little problem in his hips. And when I told him that the role would involve him being thrown to the ground, granted not hard, that kind of turned him off. He was willing, he was willing to do it, but that kind of turned him off, and I, I didn't want to run the risk. But thankfully, uh, Dylan called up Brandon Dale, our old pal, and uh, he was able to do it, no problem. Same day, he showed up around 6.30 that evening, when we were, when we, just as we arrived, and... You know, thank God for that. So he did, uh, and he did great. So as always, Brandon's just up for anything, and I love that about him. It's like, oh, you 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 want me to be a guy who gets mugged after closing your shop? I'll do that. <laughs> like he's he's a he's a swell guy. It's like he's always up for acting. He's he's always up for doing stuff like this. There were several times where I forgot to give direction, uh, particularly the nighttime shooting, uh, to uh, Brandon. Um, there are a couple times where, you know, he would, where we were doing the approaching shot and he would walk past me, but he wasn't supposed to do that. So, and there was also times when I shoved him against the wall. I said, give me your fucking wallet. And, <laughs> uh, he said, uh, he said, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Right. Okay. Oh, sorry. We didn't, we didn't quite go right. yeah. yeah, but I was like, wait, no, that's not your line. But then I thought, oh, oh. You need direction, so that, not my finest moment, you know. Uh, that's why I, I, it's again, why I didn't want to act in front of the screen, let alone as the main character. So it, um, is, it was, you know, it was one of those learning experiences, one of those funny, funny learning experiences, so. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this behind the scenes episode on Awaken. We've got more videos coming in the very near future, so be sure to stay tuned, subscribe, and 
hit the notifications button if you haven't already if you want to be informed of when the next video goes live. Be sure to check out the link to the playlist for the behind the scenes episodes. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.